It's one of the best known classics of the 1980s, but it wasn't actually a hit. It stopped just short of the top 40, number 41. This band recorded the song with their longtime lead singer and then a legendary artist who they brought in to produce the record. He didn't like the lead singer's approach to the song, so we had the whole thing re-recorded using a guest vocalist who was only with the band for the one record. He nailed it though. And one iconic line from the song became so popular that fans threw toothbrushes on stage at the band whenever it was performed. Get the inside story of this classic coming up next on Professor of Rock, brought to you by Zenny Eyewear. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Tell you what, if you love the rock and roll era, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond, click the subscribe button below. Do that right now. Click the bell so you never miss out on our content. To curate this history and to get more content and exclusives, become an official patron at the link below. Now in 1980, the band Squeeze began drafting the plan for their fourth studio album, East Side Story. Uh, the record was conceived as an ambitious double four-sided LP that would be produced by some of music's biggest names at that time, including Sir Paul McCartney, uh, Nick Lowe, Dave Edmonds, and Elvis Costello. Now, McCartney had to bow out early, and the sessions with Lowe and Edmonds uh, were inconsequential, except for uh, Quintessence, uh, a track produced by Edmonds that ended up being the first song on the record. The exception to names on the producer wish list was Elvis Costello. Now, Elvis was very enthusiastic about working with Squeeze, having been a, a big fan of their earlier releases. Elvis ended up being hired as the co-producer of East Side Story, uh, along with engineer Roger Bakirian. Uh, by the 80s, Elvis Costello was already an international star. He had four successful albums under his belt, and Bakirian was no slouch either. I mean, Roger had worked on records with Nick Lowe, uh, Dave Edmonds, The Undertones, as well as Elvis Costello and Squeeze. Uh, so Elvis proved to be invaluable, um, not only with the technical aspects of the job, but in keeping the band totally focused. Now, normally the five band members of Squeeze would take their sweet time recording a record, you know, spending far too many hours drinking at a nearby pub. But Costello was an austere taskmaster during the recording sessions, pushing the band outside of their comfort zone. Elvis uh, was even adamant about the band making changes in their diet so the band members would have more energy. It's very interesting. During the early stages of the East Side Sessions, the group lost keyboardist extraordinaire, Jules Holland. Uh, he left Squeeze to pursue a solo career. Of course, he became a TV personality, occasionally returning with the band on later recordings and special live engagements. Replacing Holland was veteran Paul Carrick, an accomplished musician who had most recently completed a stint with Roxy Music and was the lead vocalist for the ephemeral band Ace. Although Ace was uh, technically a one-hit wonder, their one and only hit was massive. It was the 1975 smash How Long. How long this been going on? That rose to number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and featured an incredible vocal performance by Carrick. Paul Carrick is just one of my favorite vocalists ever. I mean, the guy can flat out well. More on that later. You can also compose though. Carrick wrote how long about the duplicity of ace bassist Terry Corner, who was secretly playing with other groups unbeknownst to the band members of Ace. How Long is just a classic pop rock song. I mean, Phil Collins, for example, called it one of his all-time favorites. Now, before Carrick officially joined the group, Squeeze began recording tracks for East Side Story, including a Chris Difford pen tune that would become the centerpiece of the record. It was called Tempted, a song about battling unfaithful urges while being on tour. The first version of Tempted with Glenn Tilbrook singing lead was uh, produced by Dave Edmonds, but that version was quickly dismissed. I mean, Elvis thought the version sounded like something from the Electric Light Orchestra, you know, something they would have done. I mean, nothing against ELO, but it wasn't the vibe Squeeze was looking for, and it didn't fit the sentiment of the song at all. During a warm up in the studio, Carrick started singing Tempted while playing the organ, and Elvis was blown away. I mean, at that moment, 
Elvis made the crucial decision to re-record Tempted and turn the lead over to Paul Carrick instead of Tilbrook, who was you know, Squeeze's primary vocalist. Now, Tilbrook was initially upset at being replaced on the track, but then he heard Carrick sing it and realized Paul's brilliance. The way Carrick injected a genuine, soulful tonality to Tempted was just undeniable. Glenn admitted that Carrick performed the track in a way that uh, he never could have. Now that you have gone, there's no Anyone who has heard Paul Carrick's vocal on How Long will not be surprised at just how powerful his performance is on Tempted. After all, I mean, Paul Carrick is the singer that the BBC called the man with the golden voice, and it's very well earned. Uh, far from being a household name, though, Paul Carrick is just simply one of the most unpretentious, down-to-earth secret weapons of the whole rock era. The average person, you know, they may not recognize his name, but uh, they definitely know his voice. I mean, in addition to how long, Carrick delivered the lead vocal on, on Silent Running, a number six pop hit by Mike and the Mechanics. So Gen X knows that one well. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? An incredibly emotive standout vocal in the band's heart-wrenching number one international smash, The Living Years. That was released in December 88, went to number one. We don't see Carrick just has this magnetic uh, soulfulness that draws you in. His phrasing just envelops your heart. Now, before Mike and the Mechanics, Carrick uh, had a number nine solo hit with Don't Shed a Tear, great song, that was in 87. Followed by One Good Reason, that peaked at number 28, and I Live By The Groove that went to number 31 in 89. As a solo artist, Paul has quietly released 17 studio albums. Now, my favorite is his 16th entitled Soul Shadows. That came out in 2016. On that inspired album, Paul sounds as compelling as he did back in the 70s and 80s. Gonna keep on you. One of my favorite songs he's ever sung is Over My Shoulder. Over my shoulder. He's just best when he's pouring his heart out about the one that got away. Few vocalists can get to that emotional state of being. Now, Carrick is also a coveted keyboardist, playing on music with such luminaries as you know, Elton John, Eric Clapton, uh, The Pretenders, Roger Waters, Simply Red, even The Smiths, in addition to Roxy Music and Squeeze. Among his many songwriting credits is a co-author with the late Jim Capaldi and Peter Vell on Love Will Keep Us Alive. And now the Eagles were the first to record Love Will Keep Us Alive for their 94 Hell Freezes Over tour, an album, with Timothy B. Schmidt singing lead. Love will keep us alive. Although it uh, wasn't released as a single, the song sat on top of the Billboard Adult Contemporary chart for three weeks in 1995. Now, while you're getting more acquainted with uh, Paul Carrick's solo material, if you don't know, check out his version of Love Will Keep Us Alive. Uh, he recorded it in 96, and it's just devastatingly pure. Love will now, with the decision having been made for Carrick to handle uh, the lead vocal for Tempted, Glenn Tilbrook concentrated on composing the musical arrangement. Now, although Tilbrook wrote most of the music for Squeeze, the task was never a breezy one. For Glenn, the Bob Dylan quote that uh, if a song isn't done in a couple of hours is not worth it, you know, did not mirror his experience. As Glenn revealed, I quote, sometimes writing music is like creating a sculpture. You're sitting there chipping away at the block of marble and then you take a step back from it to see how you can make it more beautiful, but the route isn't always clear." End of quote. Tilbrook explored uh, many different possibilities with his musical direction for Tempted before coming up with a catchy melody that just punctuated Carrick's soulful interpretation of Chris Difford's guilt-ridden confession. The instrumental track of Tempted is a conjunctive of sophisticated jazz-like chord changes that harken the blues feel from the Stax Records era, and an effusive R&B flavor bringing back the, the glory sound of early Motown. Tempted by the fruit of 
Chris Difford on rhythm guitar, John Bentley on bass, Gilson Lavis on drums, Glenn Tilbrook on lead guitar, and Paul Carrick on keys. A vintage spirit is evoked in the opening of Tempted when we hear Paul Carrick playing his Hammond that sounds like a, a classic B organ from those magical days of formative R&B. It's just instantly captivating. But it's not my conscience. Now there's a big misnomer about Tempted. Uh, the track is often described as being new wave, and it's not. I think that label is because Squeeze for the most part is regarded as a new wave act. And uh, Squeeze did of course create many new wave gems that are so much fun to listen to. You know, Cool for Cats with Chris Difford's Cockney accent on lead vocals. And it says it's cool for cats, it's cool for cats. Pulling Muscles from a Shell, Take Me, I'm Yours, and Another Nell on My Heart, just to name it, only a few. But Tempted is not one of them. Uh, Tempted is a soul track to the very core. The jazzy R&B music arrangement, you know, Carrick's passionate lead, and the Smokey Robinson-like oohs in the background vocals. Chris Difford wrote Tempted while riding in a taxi, circulating through cross-city traffic on his way to London's Heathrow Airport to hook up with the rest of the band to fly to America to start a new tour. Difford assumes the role of narrator, who relays his uh, futile attempts to, to stay faithful, uh, stay faithful to a woman he addresses in the song while being tempted by the fruit of another. There is clever wordplay in Tempted, with Difford using a clock as an instrument of escape from his temptations, stopping time before he can't turn back his transgressions. Brilliant. Your body gets much closer. I fumble for the clock, alarmed by the seduction. I wish that it would stop. Alarmed by the seduction. And I love the uh, imagistic expression in the lyric. I said to my reflection, let's get out of this place. I said to my reflection, let's get out of this place. One has a vivid sense of uh, what the narrator is going through without the need for graphic details. The opening line, I bought a toothbrush. I bought a toothbrush, some toothpaste, a flannel for my... That generated a Rocky Horror Picture Show type crowd response when fans in the audience uh, at Squeeze concerts and they began throwing toothbrushes on the stage when the band sang the lyric. Even though Glenn Tilbrook yielded his usual lead singer spot to Paul Carrick, he does sing the first two lines in the second verse. I'm at the car park, the airport, the baggage cab. And Elvis Costello pulls out an unrecognizable baritone to deliver the line that people keep on crowding. Keep on crowding. and a husky bass when he sings It's No Story I Can Tell, also in the second verse. It's an unorthodox stroke from the song's co-producer that totally worked, just like the doot doot backing vocals at the end of verse three that lead into the final chorus. Those little nuances, they just really add to the enduring charm of Tempted. Tempted has been covered numerous times, uh, versions by Sting. <laughs> Okay, go, uh, Richard Thompson, Joe Cocker. I said to my reflection, get me out of this place. Mickey Thomas, the Georgetown Chimes, Rockapella, there's Rita Coolidge and Jenny Morris. Erica Badu uh, recorded a version in 2019. Former Squeeze player Jules Holland also covered Tempted on his album Lift the Lid, which was a nod to Jules' history with the band. The song was, of course, memorably placed in the movie Reality Bites in 94. And there was an overdub of the original recording to make a new version of the song for the movie soundtrack titled Tempted 94. <laughs> This pushed the song out to a whole new generation and the beat just goes on and on. Over the years, Tempted has been featured in commercials for you know big brands like Burger King and Heineken and the video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City as well. Uh, a great song can often get over commercialized when used in advertising. Uh, not a huge fan of that kind of song 
syncing. Sometimes they use it brilliantly, but I understand the business of it, of course. Music licensing is a big part of the process of recording and exploiting hit songs. I remember hearing this song as a little kid and just being completely enthralled by the, the organ and Carrick's stellar interpretation. To my reflection, let's get out of this Fast forward to the 90s when I saw it in Reality Bites and I immediately fell in love with it for the second time. And then a few years after that, I had a week in my life where I pretty much lived every line in this song to the T. I was nearing the end of uh, one relationship and tempted by another relationship that was moving quite quickly and I was heading to the airport. As I was driving, you know, I was going over this situation in my mind and this song came on the radio and right when it said, past the church and the steeple, the laundry on the hill, the billboards in the buildings, I passed by a large church a laundromat and several billboards as I was engulfed by the tallest buildings in that particular city. The on the hill, the billboards and the buildings. As the rest of the song played, I had this like Jerry Maguire moment, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm free. I sang the rest of the song at the top of my lungs. It was like a spiritual experience, man. I know you've all had similar experiences and I'd love to hear them in the comments. As I got on the flight with the song in my head, this, you know, this was before iPods and music streaming. This is when you had a, a book of CDs and a disc man. So the second I landed in the particular city I was traveling to, I got my rental car and I went straight to a Tower Records and I bought the Squeeze CD that I already had at home, uh, but it wasn't with me. And this uh, repurchased CD got played over and over for the week I was out of town. It just it helped me to resolve the relationships I was trying to figure out. And you know what? actually bought some perfume and a novel. <laughs> it just seemed like this song was the sign that I needed in my life. Uh, that's just what a great song does. I want a novel, some perfume, a fortune as ubiquitous as Tempted is, the tune struggled to get exposure during its promotional campaign as the first single from Squeeze's East Side Story. Single stalled at number 41 in the UK and it ran out of steam at number 49 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was a total stiff in Australia where it only reached number 90 in 1981. It's just uh, mind boggling. Just as Chris Difford succumbed to his seduction, music fans eventually surrendered to the addicting allure of Tempted, making it the signature song for Squeeze. The week that Tempted peaked at number 49 on the Billboard Hot 100, Endless Love, the duet between Diana Ross and Lionel Richie was spending its fifth week at number one. It would actually spend nine weeks at the top denying songs like Stop Dragging My Heart Around by Tom Petty and Stevie Nicks. Urgent by Foreigner with that incredible saxophone solo. In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. And Tempted by Squeeze. In an alternate reality, my alternate reality, I'd peel four of those nine weeks off and slot those four at the top spot for one week each. But in the world we live in, Tempted is number one in my heart. And hopefully yours as well. It's certainly a song for the ages. By the way, uh, Paul Carrick occasionally joins Squeeze on stage as a special guest to sing Tempted, uh, but since his departure from the band in 82, the lead vocal duties for Tempted have reverted back to Squeeze co-founder Glenn Tilbrook during their live shows. Tempted by the fruit of the and it is always a crowd favorite as the song continues to garner new admirers as an all-time classic of the pop music canon. Your body gets much closer, I fall before the park. Leave us a comment about Squeeze and this delectable song. Tell us your thoughts on Paul Carrick and uh, share your memories of the song and share an experience when a, a song seemed to describe your own life. I'd love to hear those. Uh, we do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. The glasses I wear on this channel every single day. Go do a virtual try-on and design your own glasses at zenny.com. If you like this content, we uh, admonish you to subscribe below to get more every day, to hear the song, this incredible song, hit our YouTube playlist. 
To buy Squeeze and Paul Carrick's music, click on our Amazon links. You can also get this New Order shirt below. Click on the link. Also hit us up on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.